Welcome guys, Art of the Repair and guys, welcome back to the channel. Today guys, I will be reacting to top 10 Levi Ackerman moments in Attack on Titans. This video is from Vinitube, so let's dive right into it. Guys, if you end up liking this video, ensure you drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, ensure you hit the subscribe button. Let's go. <laughs> Yo, this is... Yo, Levi is super crazy. He's super powerful. He's so persistent. That again. Who needs a lesson in Titan slaying when you can see the Beyblade of the Attack on Yo, Titan? Yo, he's so yes, sick. I'm speaking of none other he's than super Levi fast. Ackerman, the shortest man in Paradise who has a strange fetish of slicing things up while looking cool. With season four coming to a close, it's time to see 10 of the best Levi Ackerman moments in Attack on Titan. But before I continue, I'd like to mention that I've teamed up with Prime Video UK to talk about some of the best anime series that are currently included on the Prime Video platform to kickstart your journey with this magic or medium. You can catch it on Prime Video UK's YouTube channel or click on the link at the end of this video. So Levi's introduction. Yo, this guy is a sickest. Taking our 10th spot is Levi's introduction in Season 1. Now we all know how much character introductions matter in anime, especially in a series like Attack on Titan. Let's admit it, Season 1 was like the Game of Thrones of anime. You've got new character faces popping up here and there, and then all of them being killed off just like that. So how do you make an excellent first impression? By showing you stand at the top of the hierarchy in terms of power. Undoubtedly, one can guess a character Yo, stands he at just the wrapped it around his neck and then just three titans snapped the name. even breaking a sweat. Not to mention he does this in the coolest way possible. Levi Ackerman has this silent charisma that makes your eyes get glued to his character. It's that badass attitude complemented by his silent and deadly demeanor that makes his presence more visible compared to other characters. Yo! Let's not also forget this was the introduction of humanity's strongest soldier, so it sure had to be impactful. Yo, Ackerman is crazy. Yo, and Kenny! Yo, even Kenny is crazy. Up next is Levi's it's a fight, with, fight Kenny. with Kenny. Yo. Yo. I mentioned this before, and I'm repeating it again. Levi was the main character in season three. Yep, ignore all that character development. Yo, Kenny is badass also. Because this season shined the spotlight on Levi's past and his greatest rival. We all know how cool those student mentor fights are, but the best way to make it more interesting is to add guns and then to add Levi. Kenny the Ripper versus Humanity's Strongest Soldier. What are the odds? Kenny may have the upper hand, mainly due to his skill with guns, but Levi decides to be tactful here. Using the explosion as a distraction, he directly slashes his mentor from his sword, and the Ripper has to go running back to the caves with a ripped shirt. Not Kenny's best day, but then again, that man never had any good days. <laughs> Yo! Yo, and he slashed him! This is... Levi meeting Erwin. Yo, Erwin was badass too. At number eight, we have Levi meeting Erwin. How did you meet your best friend? On your way to class? Or perhaps knowing you had similar interests in something? Either way, I'm sure you didn't get to know each other after a frantic chase inside a city and a fight with blades. Levi's and Erwin's first meetup is a rather special one. One of them was manipulating the other person, and the other person, being the smart guy he is, knew he was being manipulated and acted along. Erwin was the hyped up and callous commander back in the day and Levi was like the street thug who looked cool but laid back unless someone called him for a fight. Levi's goal here was to somehow get into the military and Erwin planned to find the people who stole the maneuvering equipment. After some air aerobics and a nice and short fight scene, the two destined friends finally meet and who would have thought that one of them would encourage the other to give up his dreams and die? <laughs> <laughs> but now that Erwin is here, I'm using it on him. Levi's decision. Speaking of friends, yo, next up we have the this was a very Levi emotional moment and, Armin. Up until and a very nerve-wracking one. Any challenging moments? Because yo, I thought he was gonna give the, the, the yo, I think thought he was gonna give the Titan power to Erwin because of how strongly he spoke of Erwin leading the people and leading the the the, the scouts and 
Irwin. It was. It made more sense to me for him to give it to Irwin. So when he gave when he gave it to Armin, I was shocked. I was super shocked. Because when you're the most overpowered character in the entire show, you can always squeeze your way out of fights by slashing and killing a couple of people or titans in this case. But now we have friends in the equation, one squad mate and one commander. Who would you choose? Okay, let's shed some light and see it in the eyes of Levi, your best friend or a random stranger who worked with you for less than a year. Levi almost chooses the former, but Levi has to think twice when Erwin himself throws the serum away. Should he bring Erwin yeah. back into this nightmare again? Erwin was a slave to freedom, so should Levi put back the shackles his commander undid? It's a tough spot where you need to choose between your selfish feelings and the feelings of others, but in the end, what matters is that it was Levi's choice. Yeah. He decided not to bring Erwin yeah. into the cruel world again. Levi's entrance in Libero. Yo! Everyone is scared of Levi. Everyone know about Ackerman. Yo, everyone knew about him. Up, we he was so Levi's famous and that, that he was, and he was so famous four. and so Honestly, feared. This man really knows how to make entrances. If Eren didn't make such a grand entrance in Liberio, Levi would be dominating all of the badass Attack on Titan entrances lists. And can we take a moment <laughs> to appreciate how he appears when things no. have turned upside down? While the other members are busy fighting, Levi's chilling somewhere, waiting for his turn. Waiting in the for his and right when moment. When things turn sour, that's when he thinks, "Okay, it's time to remind these people why I'm humanity's strongest soldier." Poor was an airhead who always abided by the being a titan means being strong rule and who's the best person to shatter his perspective well levi zeke learned his lesson in season three and Porco he just slashed out his season four when an ackerman's around jaw. always check your surroundings because you never know from where they're gonna hit you they're the devils of parody annie the fight with annie yo that's another good one that is another good one he slashed her up and took her down. Coming in at number five is Levi's fight with the female Titan. Yo, can anything stop Levi? I don't think it's air. possible. I don't think Titan anything can stop this guy. Just one sentence. After seeing people slaying Titans for one whole arc and then knowing our main character's a Titan himself, that can make the concept of man versus Titan very boring. But don't fret, Marley has got some tricks under their sleeve. Or oh, is it Isayama being a genius again? Either way, this new Titan is more agile, dangerous, and slashes Eren's head with the gymnastics Yo, better one than Kick. Athlete. One again, kick. Who's there to it took save off the his day? head. Levi. If Levi's good at two things, it's slashing things slashing and rescuing up. kidnapped people. Levi teaches the female Titan what it's like to mess with an Ackerman and cuts her so hard that it brings her to tears. Okay, Yo. I know Annie didn't actually cry because of Levi, but it sure must have given her some trauma. Yo, he, he just kept slashing. He just kept slashing. Levi's rage moment. Next up is Levi's famous God Mode, aka his rage scene after seeing his friend's death. Now in all of these scenes we've spoken of so far, Levi was still his usual calm and collected self no matter how desperate the situation was. So if that was him being a badass when he was normal and calm, imagine how aggressive he could be if he were in a rage. <laughs> Turns out, killing Levi's friends isn't the best way to have a peaceful death. After seeing Furion and Isabel's corpses, Levi flies into a mad state of rage and nearly skins the Titan alive. It's bloody, it's gory, Yo. it's brutal. Traumatizing all at the same time. With this scene, we were shown why Levi was more cold hearted and numb when it came to his squad's death. He has seen death before, so it can never shake him again. As for the Titan, if Levi's blades didn't kill it, the trauma surely would have. Yo, and the guy came out half. Yo, Levi is unstoppable. Yo, this is that number three. Coming in at number three is Levi and Zeke's fight in the forest. If one small midget looking man shows up out of thin air and proceeds to slash you apart, that might mean you may not want to mess with him again. But Zeke, having the so-called Yo, genes, isn't the one to give up. If he can't handle the small guy alone, then it's time for some backup. Luckily, this man can call backup by serving wine and then screaming, so Zeke has an army of titans to support him within a matter of seconds. But remember, he's fighting a man who's the living personification of numbness and trauma. So just because you turn his comrades into titans, doesn't mean he's going to go soft on them. Once again, the same <laughs> formula is repeated. Zeke transforms, his titan is butchered, he gets captured. Seriously, these Jaegers need to learn their mm. lesson. Messing with an Ackerman isn't going to give you a happy ending. 
And he took down the Beast Titan so easily. Levi versus Kenny again. Oh. Taking our second spot is Levi's first fight with Kenny. Their second round might have ended with ripped skin, but just like Levi, his mentor also knows how to make a grand entrance and kick things to the next level. Whoa. It's no surprise. No, he Kenny was badass. Goal. With his squad to back him up, Kenny corners Levi on the rooftops and then proceeds to chase him across the rooftops. And it's then he ended up in a bar, Levi, I think. But we've got to see one of the best choreographed scenes in recent anime because of this chase. I know Mappa is good, but they can't be Wit Studio in terms of fight choreography. It's like a living person with a camera moved along with Levi and decided to record his escape in the best possible angles. The fight starts when Levi jumps off a rooftop and ends with him in a bar, and you've got juicy action to fill the entire short trip. Hats off to the animators for pulling off this scene perfectly, and hats off to Levi for escaping so many shooters <laughs> with only just a scratch on his head. Yo. Oh my god, Levi is crazy. And the first fight, I think this is the first fight. Levi versus the Beast Titan. This is when he finally caught up to him the first time and he just ripped him to shreds. Okay, actually, let me correct the title here. It should be the famous Massacre of the Beast Titan. Yeah, it's Massacre! We like to call a fight simply because there are two parties in it. But if you look at it from a different perspective, it's just Levi finding creative ways to cut down the Beast Titan. Arms, legs, Oh my legs, god, eyes. yo! All of these one by Everywhere! One their birthday cake. Zeke barely Everywhere. even has time to think or even process what to do because this devil of paradise is the living embodiment of speed. Mixing air aerobics with his skill with the blades, Levi gives us one of the best anime action sequences where one man takes down a big giant oh ape my with absolutely God. no damage at all. Trust me, if Erwin were alive to see this, he'd be grinning from a distance because if Marley's trump card are the Titans, then Paradis' trump card is the one and only Levi Ackerman. Oh my God! Yo, he just keeps slashing! How is Levi so powerful? He slashed off his hands. Oh, right in his mouth. I always love this scene. This is like my favorite scene in Attack on Titan. So there goes 10 of our best Levi Ackerman moments of all time. And the moral of this video is don't mess with short people. And if that short man <laughs> is an Ackerman, that's all the more reason to turn back and run. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to drop a like if you did. Don't forget to check out our collaboration with Amazon Prime UK. That's it for today, anime fans, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, guys, that's the video. Shout out to Vinitu for putting this together. And, oh, I love Attack on Titans. It's one of my favorite. It's probably next to One Piece. One Piece is my all-time favorite anime. And I'm going to pro probably Attack on Titans would be number second or number two. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like it, be sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, ensure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to hop on over to Vinitu. Show him some love. I know we put a lot of work into putting this video together. So show him some love. Go over to his channel. You know, subscribe and drop a like on his videos, comment, you know, show him some love. Thank you guys for watching this video. Until next time, I will see you. Peace out.